Okay, let's look at this section on modeling the action of forces. So what we've been saying before is that a force, what is a force? A force is simply uh, the action of one body uh, on the other body, right? On another body, right? So any force that you, that you experience or any force that an object experiences is because another body has been interacting with that body, either through contact, right? Either, say, a contact force or a body force. Now, what we want to do in this section is we want to model um, these forces that are caused by these interacting bodies. So the way that we do it is we will remove we will remove that body that's interacting with, say now we want to do, draw a free body diagram of this body. We will remove that body and then replace that body with the appropriate force that that body is applying to the body of interest, the one that we're isolating. Okay, so we will then isolate that body and we will replace it with a single force or we will replace it with with a moment, depending on the scenario. Okay, so without further ado, let's look at some examples. Okay, so say now you've got a beam here or some object, and there is a cable attached to it, okay, and we want to analyze this body here, then we replace the, the, the body that is interacting with it with the appropriate force. And so here we have the example. We remove that and we apply a force along the, the length, the direction of the cable. Okay, so here's an example of a flexible cable, belt, chain or rope. Now this is where in this scenario we, we do not consider the weight of the, the cable or the belt. So the force will just be then in that direction. Okay. But there are cases where we also do consider the weight of the cable. And so it's not negligible. As you can see, it's got this, this kind of, uh, there's this kind of uh, body force that's pulling it down over here. It's got the shape. So then we adjust the force that this body is applying to that one. Okay, I think you understand the idea. Now, we also have uh, scenarios where you have an, a body that is on a surface. And so the surface is applying a force to this body and we, we want to isolate this body whatever it is and and remove this uh, body and replace it with a force so you can see for a smooth surface this body is resisting this body from moving in that direction so it is opposing this motion so that's why we have we replace this with that force so it's a contact force Compressive and normal to the surface. Okay, I'm going to say that again. It's compressive and normal, meaning this is perpendicular to that contact surface. Okay, what about a rough surface? Very similar, but now we see there's that normal force again. So we take this one away and we replace it with a normal force, but because there is friction, we have to include a force that is resisting. The motion in this direction okay and then you get this resultant force so rough surface you have to replace it with a normal and a frictional force then there's a, a roller rollers okay we'll see in, in more applications where the where we see these but the basic idea is you've got guys you've got some kind of structure or body and it is interacting with its surroundings via either a rough surface or it's interacting there's a roller that's keeping that's supporting it right all these kinds of interactions so roller support here is the body there are the bodies that we're interested in right these things and we want to take uh, we want to replace this with a force and so th the question you have to ask yourself is um, does this support does it uh, resist motion in this direction? Right? Yes. So then we replace it with 
a force in that direction. Will a roller resist motion in this horizontal direction? Meaning, if I apply a force here, is this support going to stop it from moving side to side? And the answer is no. So then you don't replace, you don't apply a, a resistive reactive force in this horizontal direction. Okay? So if we have a roller, we replace it just with this kind of force. <clears throat> what about a freely sliding guide? <clears throat> that means that this object is attached to this guide that can slide up and down like that. So what are the forces that can are, are resisting, potentially resisting the motion of this object? Is there a force resisting it in this horizontal direction? No. So I don't replace it with a force in that direction. But if I pull on, on this object, will it, will this uh, guide, will it stop it from moving? Yes. So we replace it, we replace this with a force in the, in that vertical direction. Okay. Hope it's making sense. A pin connection. A pin connection resists the motion of this object in we can say in the X and the Y. If you pull it up, right, there'll be a reaction force. If you pull it to the side, there'll be a reaction force. So we replace this pin connection with a RY and an RX. And then, now I'm going to introduce moments. If you can't rotate this, this, um, this member over here, if you can't rotate it, it means that this, this pin connection is not only resisting motion, uh, translational motion, it's also resisting rotation. So then you need to include a couple moment that is also resisting um, rotation. Okay, does that make sense? I hope so. What about a built-in or fixed support? Okay, so a beam is built into a wall, something like that, or it's welded onto another structure. What is this body? How is this body resisting the motion of this body what are the forces that this body can potentially apply well it will resist motion in the horizontal direction so you put that f in over there it'll resist motion in the vertical direction if you try to pull this guy down then this support over here this other body will resist motion in the vertical direction so there we go and this is by the way this is called shear force okay for we'll, we'll, you'll look at that in more advanced courses, but it's just a the vertical force. And then it will also, this kind of connection, this kind of support, will also resist rotation. If you want to rotate this body, right, this body's not just going to freely rotate, it's going to be resisted by a moment. So we have to include that in as well. We remove this body and we apply, and we show the forces that this body is applying to that body. What about gravitational attraction? This is now a body force, means it's not necessarily in contact, physically contact with the Earth, but um, we, we'd simply have the gravitational force acting on that body. What about um, a spring? Here's the body of interest, and we have a spring being applied to it. Okay. We just apply a force in the direction of the spring, which is equal to kx if it's linear or some non-linear function if it's not linear. Okay, and then we have a torsional spring. Here is the body, right, the blue part, and the spring is the, is the body that we want to remove and apply the force that that body is applying to it. So you can see it applies a moment equal to the spring constant times the angle of rotation, theta. Very similar to, this is a linear spring, kx. A rotational spring is k theta. You can see the similarity. Guys, does that make sense? You replace, you, you remove the object that's being applied, and then you replace it with that force. But you need to ask yourself, does that object resist motion in the horizontal? Does it re resist motion in the vertical? And is there some kind of rotational resistance?